Anguttara Nikaya, The Numerical Discourses, Atta Kanipata, Book of the Eights, Suttas 91 to 117, Samanyavagga, The Section on Similarities. On several occasions, when the Blessed One was approached by numerous Upasikas, female lay disciples, including Bhajha, Sirima, Paduma, Sutana, Manuja, Uttara, Mutta, Khema, Soma, Ruchi, Chundi, Bimbi, Sumana, Queen Mallika, Tissa, Tissa Mata, Sona, Sonayamata, Kana, Kanamata, Nandamata, Visaka, or Migaramata, Kujuttara, the flower slave girl, Queen Samavati, Supavasa, the Kolian, Suppia, and the housewife, Nakulamata. Here, the Blessed One took the time instructing these female lay disciples on the importance of living the full moon Uposata while adhering to the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. Thus, it was at such an occasion when the Upasika Sirima, the female lay disciple, came and approached the Blessed One, and after worshipping him and paying her respects, she sat to one side. And the Blessed One began instructing her by saying, Sirima, when observing the Uposata's full moon day, you must do so while having within you these eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. And what, Sirima, are those eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space? Here, Sirima, the noble disciple in training reflects, as long as they are still alive, the Arahants live while having given up the harming and killing of living beings, for they have utterly abandoned weapons, leaving behind the use of sticks and swords, and instead live out the rest of their lives with meticulous and kind consideration towards both themselves and all other beings remaining compassionate towards all. So here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up the harming and killing of living beings by utterly abandoning weapons, leaving behind the use of sticks and swords, and instead behave with meticulous and kind consideration towards both myself and all other beings, remaining compassionate towards all. In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahants, as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the first factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. Next, Sirima, the noble disciple reflects, As long as life lasts, the Arahants live while having given up, taking of what is not freely given, for they only take what is given to them with free will, as they remain abiding in honesty and absolutely without any thoughts of coveting or theft. So here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up the taking of what is not freely given, and instead only take what is given to me with free will, as I remain abiding in honesty and absolutely without any thoughts of coveting or theft. 
In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahants, as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the second factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. Next to the Ima, the noble disciple reflects, as long as life lasts, the Arahants live while having given up sexual activities of all kinds, as they observe celibacy, living secluded, while fully abstaining from sexual intercourse of any kind, which is the practice of common ordinary beings. So here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up sexual activities of all kinds, as I too observe celibacy, living secluded, while fully abstaining from sexual intercourse of any kind, which is the practice of common, ordinary beings. In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahants as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the third factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. Next, Sidima, the noble disciple reflects, as long as life lasts, the Arahants live while having given up lying or the speaking of what is untrue and false and instead speaking only what is true, for they are truly trustworthy, honest, and reliable, while living without any form of deceptions or cunningness in their behavior. So here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up lying or the speaking of what is untrue and false. Thus, I will be speaking only what is true, as I too become truly trustworthy, honest, and reliable, while living without any forms of deception or cunningness in my behavior. In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahants as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the fourth factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. Next, Sirima, the noble disciple reflects, as long as life lasts, the Arahants live while having given up the consumption of cigarettes and the chewing of betel nut, liquor and wine, along with all kinds of intoxicating drugs and mind-altering substances that are the basis for becoming deluded and negligent. So, here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up the consumption of cigarettes and the chewing of betel nut, liquor and wine, along with all kinds of intoxicating drugs and mind-altering substances that are the basis for becoming deluded and negligent. In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahants as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the fifth factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. Next, Sirima, the noble disciple reflects, as long as life lasts, the Arahants live while eating once per day, having given up the consumption of solid food at night and outside the appropriate time. From this night and day I too will eat once, having given up the consumption of solid food at night and outside at the appropriate time. In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahants as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, 
I will thus possess the sixth factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout beyond time and space. Next, Siddhi Ima, the noble disciple reflects, as long as life lasts, the Arahants live while having given up dancing, singing, playing or listening to entertainment and music, from adorning and beautifying themselves by wearing garlands, decorated clothing or headgear, ornaments as well as the putting of oils and perfumes for aesthetic purposes. So here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up dancing, singing, playing or listening to entertainment and music from adorning and beautifying myself by wearing garlands, decorated clothing or headgear, ornaments as well as the putting on of oils and perfumes for aesthetic purposes. In this manner, I will emulate the noble Arahans, as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the seventh factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually, as it permeates throughout beyond time and space. Next, Sirima, the noble disciple reflects, as long as life lasts, the Arahants live while having given up using high and luxurious beds and seats, and instead they take whatever is available for them, whether a low seat or a spread of grass for their bed. So here, throughout this day and night, I also am giving up using high and luxurious beds and seats, and instead I will take whatever is available for me, whether a low seat or a spread of grass for my bed. In this manner I will emulate the noble Arahans, as I observe this full moon night and day of the Uposata, and through my intentional dedication to this, I will thus possess the seventh factor of the eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. So you see, Sidi Ima, when you observe the Uposata, you must also have within you these eight factors that make the observance of the one training during the Uposata become truly of great fruit and of much benefit, turning it into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually, as it permeates throughout, beyond time and space. And to what degree, Sirima, does it become truly of great fruit and benefit? To what extent does your observance of the Uposata turn into such an offering that it continues growing perpetually as it permeates throughout beyond time and space? Here, Sirima, if you were to compare, then imagine having sovereignty and complete dominion over the vast countries of the Angas, Magadans, the Kasis, the Kosalans, the Vajis, the Mallas, the Chetis, the Vangas, Kurus, Panchalas, Machas, Surasenas, Asakas, Avantis, Gandharas, and Cambodians, along with all their countless jewels and wealth. Now all that is not worth even one sixteenth of that which can be obtained from observing the Uposata with the eight factors we just mentioned. And what is the reason for this? The reason is that, no matter how great it may seem, human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide, in all actuality are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. After all, Sidima, Bear in mind that a single period of night and day spent in the heavenly realm of the four guardian god-kings is equivalent to fifty human years. So, consider how thirty of those days make up a month, and twelve such months make up a year. 
Now the average lifespan of those born into that heavenly realm of the four guardian god-kings is 500 celestial years. So, when someone, whether a man or a woman, observes the uposatha fully, that is, while possessing the eight factors discussed, then, if they desire it, there is every possibility for such a person to be reborn in the companionship of the four guardian god-kings. Therefore, it was on account of this that it was said, human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide, in all actuality, are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. Similarly, Sirima, a single period of night and day spent in the Tavatinsa heavenly realm of the 33 gods is equivalent to 100 human years. So consider how 30 of those days make up a month, and 12 such months make up a year. Now the average lifespan of those born into that heavenly realm of Tavatinsa is 1,000 celestial years. So, when someone, whether a man or a woman, observes the Uposatha fully, that is, while possessing the eight factors discussed, then, if they desire it, there is every possibility for such a person to reborn in the companionship of the Devas of the 33. Therefore, it was on account of this that it was said, human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide, in all actuality are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. Similarly, Sidima, a single period of night and day spent in the heavenly realm of the Yama gods is equivalent to 200 human years. So consider how 30 of those days make up a month and 12 such months make up a year. Now the average lifespan of those born into that heavenly realm of Yama Devas is 2,000 celestial years. So when someone, whether a man or a woman, observes the Uposatha fully, that is, while possessing the eight factors discussed, then, if they desire it, there is every possibility for such a person to be reborn in the companionship of the Devas of the Yama heavenly realm. Therefore, it was on account of this that it was said, human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide, in all actuality, are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. Similarly, Sirima, a single period of night and day spent in the heavenly realm of the Tusita gods is equivalent to 400 human years. So consider how 30 of those days make up a month, and 12 such months make up a year. Now the average lifespan of those born into that heavenly realm of Tusita Devas is 4,000 celestial years. So when someone, whether a man or a woman, observes the Uposatha fully, that is, while possessing the eight factors discussed, then, if they desire it, there is every possibility for such a person to be reborn in the companionship of the Devas of the Tusita heavenly realm. Therefore, it was on account of this that it was said, human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide, in all actuality are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. Similarly, Sirima, a single period of night and day spent in the heavenly realm of the Nimanarati gods that delight in creating is equivalent to 800 human years. So consider how 30 of those days make up a month, and 12 such months make up a year. Now the average lifespan of those born into that heavenly realm of Nimanarati devas is 8,000 celestial years. So when someone whether a man or a woman, observes the Uposatha fully, that is, while possessing the eight factors discussed, then, if they desire it, there is every possibility for such a person to be reborn in the companionship of the Devas of the Nimanarati heavenly realm. Therefore, 
It was on account of this that it was said, Human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide in all actuality, are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. Similarly, Sirima, a single period of night and day spent in the heavenly realm of the Paranimita gods that delight in controlling and manipulating the creations of other gods is equivalent to 1,600 human years. So, consider how 30 of those days make up a month, and 12 such months make up a year. Now the average lifespan of those born into that heavenly realm of Paranimita Devas is 16,000 celestial years. So, when someone, whether a man or a woman, observes the Uposata fully, that is, while possessing the eight factors discussed, then, if they desire it, there is every possibility for such a person to be reborn in the companionship of the Devas of the Paranimita heavenly realm. Therefore, it was on account of this that it was said, Human rulership or earthly dominion, along with all possessions they may provide, in all actuality are quite pitiable and menial in their poverty, when compared to heavenly bliss and happiness. Do not kill or harm any living beings, nor take that which is not freely given. Do not speak lies, nor be deceptive or consume any kinds of intoxicants. Keep yourself free and far removed from engaging in any kind of sexual behavior as you begin to live the holy life yourself, while also abstaining from taking food at night or at the inappropriate times. Do not beautify yourself with flowers or applying any perfumes or oils to try and be attractive. Instead, sleep on the floor or on an unpretentious mat. Thus, you will be observing the eight factors for the full moon Uposhata, extolled by the Buddha, who has gone to the farther shore, beyond the reach of suffering. The resplendent moon and sun illuminating the skies, while dispelling darkness all around, continue to shed their light so utterly beautiful to behold as they move through space. Whatever wealth that may lie within this realm, whether it's pearls, precious stones, diamonds, emeralds, and rubies, lapis lazuli, the purest of gold, or the gold and silver collected from mountains. All that is not even one-sixteenth in worth when compared to the Uposata one completes with all its eight factors, for the treasures of the world are simply like the faint luminance of far-off stars in the constellations, shining in the distance of space are all dimmed when compared to the bright radiance of the moon. In this way, the virtuous woman or man, observing the eight-factored full moon uposata, having made such enormously great merits, goes to enjoy their long life of blameless happiness to be spent in the various celestial realms. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.